Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. All right, hopefully everybody can hear me. Let me, hopefully these notifications go out and everybody's getting them. Shout out to everybody in the chat. You guys, I have a little bit of a, I can feel like some my sinuses just kind of hurting and my face getting a little bit puffy. I don't know. It's like, you know, that season where everybody brings crap from everywhere and you start getting sick and I could feel it in my throat. I could feel it in my face. And I could definitely feel it under my eyes. I just feel it. But anyways, welcome everybody, guys. Thank you. Hey, Bridget. Cheeks, Pika. Thank you. Hey, Mel. How you doing? Ro, welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys, shout out to everybody in the chat. Let me get this intro going so we can get started. And we can talk about this case a little bit more in depth. Let's see. Is this the intro? Where's the intro? Right over here. guys welcome back to my channel you guys welcome 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 get back in here shout out to everybody guys thank you so much for being here shout out to everybody see Kisa, casey g thank you leah leah scary larry welcome and welcome 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 esther how you doing love oki oki crime news with Teresa. welcome and bridget Shout out to everybody that's coming through, you guys. Thank you so much for hitting the like button while you're in here. All right, so we got to get it together because yesterday we covered the case of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, the women that were driving, I guess, cross country and went missing. Uh, there was a visitation that was set up, and there's just a lot of just not nothing is really making sense out of this case, whether. They were followed. What happened exactly? We just have a lot of questions. And so we definitely going to get into it right now. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it as we do best. Thank you. So let's talk about it. I was also, I was able to actually see some of the court documents. Uh, shout out to attorney Melanie Little. You guys check out her channel if you want a really good thorough legal breakdown and stuff because the lady does a thing. I mean, she really does a thing and really puts out information that um, is important. So you have these two women. One of them was there to just visit to to supervise visitations for you know kids. Actually, they were there to pick up a child. There was there was a party. Like the different things were happening here, and none of it is making sense. Where did they go? Their car was found, but where are these women? Did they ever make it to their location? Was the car placed there? And the way the car, where the car was placed, it's like a vast area. I mean, it's just, 
it's at least for a lot of speculation that people are having at this point. There's also this thing about this custody issue from the paternal side that we got to talk about it. People, well, the law enforcement, I believe, is suspecting foul play at this point. That's what they have said. Um, listen, if they're speculating, I just don't. Um, yeah. We're going to do what we're going to do as far as provide the information as best as we can, I guess. So let me start with this article that really breaks things down. So this is April 1st. There's been several updates since the 1st of April, but this was the search, the excuse me, urgent search of missing moms, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly's car was found abandoned 45 miles from where they were last seen. So the car that they were driving was found abandoned. Their family have been sharing heartfelt messages on social media. So there's a frantic search underway, and there still continues to be a search. There's not a whole lot of media coverage on this case, which is a little concerning, right? Uh, keep that in mind. So Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kelly, 39, were traveling together from Hugoton, Kansas, to pick up children but never made it to that destination. Now, Jillian Kelly is uh, supervising visits for Veronica. Keep that in mind. So she was actually kind of there to do that job. Um, the way it was being reported is that they were acquaintances. I mean, I believe this was like court ordered at this point. So yeah, I don't think that there was like, I don't know if it would necessarily be an acquaintance, but I guess if that's what they call it, right? So Veronica Butler in the picture, she's 27 years old. And then you have Jillian Kelly, 39, who were reported missing on Saturday after their car was abandoned on the side of the road, okay? Keep that in mind. Local police and State Bureau of Investigations are frantically searching. Now, they this is why I'm referencing the sun because I do like this little map thing that they did for us here. Uh, at least I find it helpful. So here they have urgent search for missing moms. Cops are searching for two missing moms whose car was found abandoned on the side of the road uh, 45 miles from their home. Okay. So Willow Creek. Okay. Let me go to number one. It says number one, Jillian Kelly and Veronica Butler left home around March 30th. So is that, let me see. What was Easter? Wasn't Easter the 31st? Was Easter the 31st? Let me know in the chat. So they leave in this car on March 30th. Okay. Then the missing mom's car was found abandoned in Elkhart, Kansas. All right. So not, I mean, uh, it, it, it kind of a lot of questions that we have at this point. Then uh, the Willow Christian church in Nebraska, where Kelly's husband works, right? That's the number three. They're kind of pointing out the numbers here. And then four, second church in Hugoton, Kansas, where Kelly's husband works. So, I mean, just the different uh, uh, numerations there to kind of give us an idea of like the four corners, where they were at location wise, just keep that in mind. Uh, it's, you said it's about three miles away from Ava. Yeah. They, and they have said that as well, right? That it's like not too far off. It's four corners ish, right? Um, Cheeks, thank you. And the March 31st was Easter. So the car was found. And we have a lot of questions and not a lot of answers, okay? So the car was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road L in rural Texas County, Oklahoma, according to the OSBI, okay? The mothers were supposed to pick up Butler's six-year-old daughter and eight-year-old son in Ava, Oklahoma, to celebrate her daughter's birthday. There was a birthday celebration when their 16-mile trip was cut three miles short. The Texas County Sheriff's Department asked the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations to help investigate the suspicious disappearance of the two mothers. As of right now, as the investigation continues, we were requested, we're unsure whether these women are or what happened to them. Now, this is from the first, so keep that in mind. There's been like, people have speculated foul play. They're not, if they're not found, 
of course, there's, there's just a speculation at this point that's out there, um, rightfully so. They never made it back. They never made it to their destination. At least that's what it said. Unless they were followed. Unless, like, there's just a lot of unless and less and less and less. And people have, where did these women go? That's really what this is. Like, were they followed? They were supposed to meet up at a specific spot. What happened to them? Where are these women? Where did they go? People don't just disappear like that, you guys. They just don't. Something must have happened. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And there hasn't been a whole lot of like updates. There hasn't, other than they're still searching. Police, the the, the community there is very tight lipped. They're not wanting to say a whole lot. Uh yeah. I mean, I just, and even then, even like not knowing a whole lot of details about what's going on. Um, there's details, at least court paperwork has been released. And we're going to get into that a little bit because that kind of worries me too, that there's speculation in terms of like family members, what happened, what, what people might've had something to do there. It's just, it's too much. Hold up y'all. And let me show you guys this. Okay. Uh, it's Hunter McKee, H-U-N-T-E-R, M-C-K-E-E, Public Information Manager, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Um, on Saturday, March 30th, the Texas County Sheriff's Office requested the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation mm -hmm. to investigate the suspicious disappearance of two women. This was 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly. Um, uh, their vehicle was found abandoned. This was near Highway 95 and Road L, and this was just south of Elkhart, uh, Kansas. This was on the very- And please in mind, keep this in mind that the area where they went missing, they don't have a whole lot of like cell phone service so cell phone pings that was my question they didn't have search dogs out there they were searching in drones and we were looking at that footage yesterday and he said oh my god like the drones it's this this area is so rural bass yeah yeah it's a lot of a lot of unknowns a lot of unknowns kcg i, I did answer your question that has that information has not been released whatsoever. You said law enforcement knows something and they don't really want to like they're not saying a whole lot, if that makes sense. So it's just it's a lot to kind of get into. Very northern uh, part of uh, rural Texas County, just south of that Kansas line. Um, as soon as the OSBI special agents were requested to assist with this case, um, our special agents, along with several other uh, local law enforcement uh, agencies in that area, um, all came together to um, try to track down where these two people went. Um, um, as this investigation continued, um, our agents were able to determine that the abandoned vehicle that was found along that road had um, uh, information that they were able to gather that um, showed signs uh, that there was foul play. Um, as of right now, what was found inside of the vehicle, the condition of the vehicle is still under investigation right now. And in regards to our, um, investigation, that information cannot be released. However, we can say that, um, based on what they were able to obtain, that there was foul play, um, right. There was foul play. Who would want to harm these women? That's the que that's the question that we all have. Marcy says, I live in the area. If you aren't from here, you probably won't like it. Is there a threat to the community? Uh, you said, Kim says, look, I believe that there's no threat to the community. There was foul play. They know something. That's kind of like where my mind goes. You said, I think probably the fiance pinged your phone at 915 area where the car was found. Nothing around after. You said the fiance pinged her phone? Pinged whose phone? Veronica's phone? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You, you're going to have to specify that a little bit. Right now, we are still looking for both women at this time, and there mm -hmm. are no arrests. Mm -hmm. And again, we've received several tips on this case so far, but we're asking that the public in that area or anyone that has uh, additional information or knows about the whereabouts of these two people to please reach out to the OSBI at tips at osbi.ok.gov. And you can also call us at 1-800-522-8017. Mm -hmm. We're not sure at this time. 
Um, we're investigating this. Um, the, um, we're investigating this as everything is on the table. Um, we are hopeful that they are still alive, but we're going to do everything in our power to to track these these two people down as quickly as we can. Yeah, that's a great. <laughs> Right, right. Because like, tell me there was blood because a plain abandoned car with nothing left would not have made them say foul play. Yeah. Where did the foul play come from? Nobody just says that out of anywhere. Nobody does. I'm just saying. Um, Zoe, where are you getting your source, though? I haven't I haven't seen anybody release that. So I kind of want to be careful. They're hoping family members reached out anonymously. Well, see, that's the thing. And this is the piece we were talking about this yesterday. There is a, um, there's a journalist on YouTube who's been having contact with the family. And I want to be kind of like, you know, I mean, they're having contact. They're releasing the information that they want to release, right? But there isn't a whole lot of conversation here on YouTube about this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys. She's a journalist, so I feel okay given that she's talked to the family we're going to put it there. Let me see. Um, there are court paperwork that attorneys have released. The media has released. So there isn't anything that I'm like releasing that people don't know. But she posted this on uh, the 2nd of April. She said, missing Kansas woman, Veronica Butler's ex and the father of her children. We're now remember she's traveling across state with a with Jillian Kelly, who's supervising those visits. The father of her children uh, was recently released from jail for possession of a firearm after a felony conviction. His arraignment was March 7, 2024. And part of his sentencing was six months inpatient rehab to start on March 22nd in Oklahoma. Did he make it to rehab? Can he be ruled out as a suspect if so? I would think he did as there would be a warrant out for his arrest if he did not report on the 22nd. So maybe that's his alibi. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, and I was shout out to her because she was very, very much insightful. Shout out to her. You said thank you so much, Pika, for posting that. You said, I know that there were some YouTubers over here on the weekend. Oh, yes, I heard. They didn't like the dirt blowing in the 40 mile per hour wind and the flying tumbleweeds. <laughs> Because it's that kind of an area, right, Marcy? Like, there's tumbleweeds. Definitely. Um, the silence around this case is so weird. No family members on TV asking for help or searching. Well, there is Jillian Kelly's family members. You said mic drop. Well, that's the thing. It's like, so that's the husband, or, or excuse me, not the husband, because they were never married. The ex, the father of the children, okay? So there is a personal recognizance order, um, bond appearance that's up there that shows kind of his, I don't know, criminal stuff. Keep that in mind. And then she puts in this, this independent journalist. Her name is Lauren, by the way. Um, she puts up another post that says, update. Regarding Kansas women, Veronica and Jillian, I spoke with the grandmother of um, the father, the father of the children. He uh, is, a, you know, father of the children, the ex. Okay, keep that in mind. Grandmother confirmed below. The father of the children was checked into rehab on the 22nd, 30-day no contact and cannot leave any outings from the facility for 30 days and has to be there for six months. The OSBI confirmed he was there. So he was at rehab. For those that are kind of wondering, was he ever at rehab? He was at rehab. All right. I asked if the but if if uh Butler and the father, Veronica Butler and the children, or excuse me, I asked if the but if Butler children and the father, the children, if they were safe. This is what she asked. I'm trying to be careful about the names that I release because I want to be mindful that some of the stuff is not out in public. The OSBI uh, has told us that they have eyes on them and they are okay. So the kids are okay. Kids are okay. She shared a few more interesting pieces of information that I need to vet. She said she also stated that no family will likely be doing any type of interviews that could hinder the investigation. 
And she puts in there, I'm assuming she's speaking on YouTubers and podcasters. So, like I said, this journalist is talking to the family and they're dropping little kind of things of information here and there. Okay. Um, let me see what else. There's more information that was posted. I want to kind of be mindful of that. All right. So here's more. This was five days ago. Shout out to everybody that's coming in, you guys. Thank you so much. Make sure you hit the like button. Angela Boo, thank you so much for becoming a member. We are a small crowd today, and I kind of like it because we get to kind of like chill and talk, and I can actually pay attention to the chat a little bit more. Leah Leah says, my first thought was it's got to be the ex, but being in rehab, no contact kind of blows my theory out the window. That's Leah Leah. That's what everybody says, and they're not naming him or anybody else like any kind of suspect. You know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. Hi, everybody. I'm from Oklahoma. Maybe I can help. Well, anything that you can provide, shout out to you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Shout out to everybody from Oklahoma. I know we got some folks in here. Hey, Puzzle to Pieces, it's been a minute. Hope you're doing well. Marcy says there's tons of tumbleweeds and we haven't had much moisture. So when the wind blows, so does the dirt. Um, there were some road closed on saturday because of the low visibility wow see it's that kind of it's, it's that kind of area you guys oh cheeks thank you so much for gifting memberships thank you if you guys got a membership from cheeks put a heart in the chat thank you guys i am feeling a little bit under the weather i don't know if you guys can hear it i i sound a little nasally so excuse my nasalness excuse it uh debbie says this is so sad and scary I'm thinking the grandmother of sus gives me Donna Adelson vibes. We were talking about that yesterday too. Hey, Persephone. Welcome, welcome. Shout out to everybody. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, Jane says, is it Jane? Yes. Was the car found on the way to the pickup? I don't know if the, the car was found. Now, I don't know who found the car, but that's a great question. Was it found... Like, were they searching for them and they were driving by there and they found the car? Who found the car would be a great question. Hey, T. Salas, welcome. Okay. Thank you all. Shout out to Carrie. Welcome to all the members. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Cheeks, for gifting. And don't look back. Thank you. You said, I was wondering if one of the ladies was harmed and the other is part of it in union with another. Really, Sue, what, what would make you say that, though? Tell me a little bit about that. I mean, is that like a... A theory. What are your thoughts? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Marcy says a car was past where they were supposed to meet up. Yeah, it wasn't too far from that area. It really wasn't. Um, Zoe says Veronica's father was very vocal about it, but he got served a gag. See, I don't know about that because mm, attorney Melanie Little said that there was nothing that showed any type of order of anything. So I don't know. I think maybe he just said, you know, I'm just not going to talk. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Chico, um, you'd like to see the grandmother? Look, listen, people have said stuff about the grandmother. You said, I heard Veronica's husband went looking for them. Yeah. You said you're from Tallahassee and it's giving you Adelson vibes. Y'all leave that Donna Adelson alone. You know, she's got bigger problems. She's worrying about the bed and the mattress at the county jail. She's still at the county jail, right? It's been a minute since we talked about Miss Adelson. Just say it. It's been a minute. I'm out of copy, so. Anyways, okay. So let's get it together and let's keep reading. So this journalist posted something very interesting and I'm trying not to show it because she didn't redact the information. So I want to be careful, but she says what happened to Veronica and Jillian Kelly, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kel Kelly, the family has been advised to not give interviews to the media during the ongoing investigation where there are now reports of evidence of foul play. This is very scary. Both women are mothers and very loved. A source close to the family, all right, and it's the father, this is what they're saying, shared that Veronica Butler was fearful of, see, this is, was fearful of 
the father's mother. For those that were throwing that, Adelson, just letting you guys know, whom she was allegedly driving to see the day she, oh, hold up, whom she was allegedly driving to see the day she disappeared to pick up her children. The mother, the grandmother, was the intervener per court docs. Butler had previously made allegations against her son, claiming he abused the kids, the children. These allegations were unsubstantiated per court docs. There has, however, been a no-contact order against Butler's brother, who allegedly abused one of the children. That was possibly violated. Those documents are no longer available. This is what they're saying. And she dropped those, those documents here on the orders. Okay. Ooh, wee. This is like, Lord have mercy. Hold up. Let me see if I can read. Yeah. It's like really blurry. Um, yeah. So keep that in mind. This is, so this person is talking to the family and this is what they're dropping. Uh, let's keep reviewing. Hold up. And then there's more. This was posted about a day ago. She says, still missing Jelly, Jillian Kelly and Veronica Butler. Court documents and, and briefs can be one-sided. This is, this is her opinion. Facts and screenshots below sh have been pulled directly from the defendant and petitioner's statement in Butler versus paternal side, the father's side, the grandmother. and Butler versus the father. In the children's best interest, I am not going into details about specific allegations. I am not making any direct accusations, she puts in an exclamation point. I'm laying out all allegations and facts that could lead to motive. All right. She puts this in all caps. So let's talk about it because it's all caps. She says, Butler was accused, Butler has accused grandmother, and she puts the grandmother's name there, of child stealing. The father refuted this by claiming Butler needed a third party for visitation and did not bring one. The father has accused his own mother via Facebook. So father, grandmother, mother, his mother, he accused her of withholding the children from him and Butler. The grandmother refuted those claims and that's in the order as well. The grandmother was filing an official petition for guardianship for the children and stated that her son gave up the children for drugs, partying, and other degenerate behavior. Mm -mm -mm. The father was previously granted emergency temporary custody because of a violation concerning Veronica Butler's brother. Butler's lawyer claimed at the time the father had not yet filed anything. Yeah, the poor kids are out of everything. You said, oh, Trey Monkey says, I don't know if it's true, but I heard that they changed. Shout out to Trey Monkey. I haven't seen you in a minute. I hope you're doing well. You said they changed location the last minute? Wow. Hey, Monica. Yeah, the, I mean, this... Listen, in such things like that, you're absolutely like, it, the kids don't ever win. This, this isn't about the children. They don't ever win. So this is what this journalist put out there, letting you guys know. So Veronica Butler claims that grandmother had canceled visitation with the children and not scheduled makeups in the last few months. There was a hearing set for the grandmother and Butler on November 15th of 2023. And the grandmother requested a motion for continuance, 
One day later, the father was arrested on November 16th of 2023 for possession of a firearm after a felony charge. The father canceled, or excuse me, the grandmother canceled the mother, Veronica Butler's visitation on March 16th of 2024. This is interesting. There was a hearing scheduled for April 17th of 2024 for Butler to have overnight visits, unsupervised and increased visits with her children. So what this sounds like to me is that it, I don't know based on this, the mother might have not had any type of physical custody of the children. The grandmother could have been given temporary or something to that effect. Let me reread that again. It says um, the grandmother canceled Veronica Butler, Veronica Butler's the mother's visitation on eight, on March 16th of 2024. So literally last month, there was a hearing scheduled for April 17th of 2024 for Veronica Butler to have overnight visits unsupervised and increased visits with their children. Veronica Butler and the grandmother agreed to meet halfway for pickup and drop off of the children in Elkhart, Kansas, instead of the Four Corners. Train Monkey, when you said that the location had been changed, you might be on that. Um, so Veronica and grandmother agreed to meet halfway for pickup and drop off. Um, of the children in Elkhart, Kansas, instead of the Four Corners, as it was closer for both of them. So the car was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road L near Elkhart, Jillian. A court-appointed supervisor and a friend of Butler seemingly is not involved in anything other than supervising these visits. And that's that. Yeah, I mean, the, the narrative here, yeah, the car was found abandoned, Blue, it was. So the narrative here is very um, interesting. So... Let me see if I can pull these court dogs. Hold up. She put these screenshots up here and let me go back to that paragraph where it said Butler, Veronica Butler claims that grandmother has canceled visitation with the children and not schedule makeups in the last few months. So was grandmother keeping mother away from the children? And so then there was a hearing set and that's the, I see this is the court filing where it says the respondent, the grandmother, is currently in violation of the Oklahoma criminal statute, child stealing, which is a felony offense punishable up to 10 years. The court should enter its writ of habeas corpus, this is that habeas corpus that Melanie was talking about, demanding that she proceed um, the minor children in this court excuse me, produce the minor children to this court. You, this is bad, you guys. So, all right. So here's the, the petition of habeas corpus. And I know Miss Melanie read it, but she, it said in here that any and all allegations set forth by petitioner to modify a motion to enforce visitation. So, the order's controlling custody and visitation rights with regards to the subject minor children born 2015 and 2018 were entered in December 7th, on December 7th of 2022. Okay, and so far as it pertains to the petition, the prior order has not been modified by this or any other court. Okay, the last period of specific visitation that the, the petitioner was allowed to exercise with the minor children took place July 1st of 2023. So the last time, she, the last time Veronica had seen the children was 2020, July 1st of 2023. Yeah, Chico, I, I hate to put it this, I hate to put that shit out there, but I would kind of, 
agree with you on that. Like, they're saying foul play, but they probably already know what happened here. Now, I'm not saying that we know nobody's been named a suspect, nobody's been accused of anything, but come on now. Like, that is crazy. If she Donna Adelson the situation, listen, not what I'm saying, but if she Donna Adelson the situation, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is just speculation, not facts. Please note that. Do not come for my neck. I have a sore throat right now. Don't come for my neck. <laughs> Shout out to everybody. Look, um, what do you guys think? Your imagination goes wild on this case, right? We were all thinking the same thing yesterday. We, we, we were talking about it, right? Leah Leah's laughing at me. She's like, wrap it. I said, look, don't come for my neck. I got a sore throat right now. Cheek says, if she was in violation of custody, they should have had the police escort. Right. Why would they leave it? Listen, this is not the first custody situation where things don't go right. Now, it's this is speculation because for all we know, grandmother could have just, maybe they didn't make it there. Maybe they met foul play elsewhere. Maybe this is what this is about. Like, maybe they were followed. We don't know if this, like, I don't want to accuse this lady of a crime or anything, but it's not looking good. Really? Okay. That's what I heard, too. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, totally clips of the heart. That's interesting. Okay, so, um, yes, yeah, so we have two missing women. That's what this is about. One of them was an acquaintance through a church, and um, she was hired. I, I guess she was there to help assist in the visitation. Uh, it sounds like she might have been court-appointed. She is court-appointed at the time. You said don't rule out, pay for hire. I, I'm not ruling it. I'm not ruling in or anything out at this point because we really don't know. You know, but but such domestic type of custody stuff, it gets crazy, you know? It gets crazy. I heard that the lady owns land. I mean, that's what I heard. But anyways, let me continue reading you guys. It's this thing that says that um, the respondent, which is the grandmother, has had exclusive possession of the minor children for the past several months and is withholding them from both parents currently so she's not only withholding them from the mother she's withholding the children from the father what why what's going on like i know grandmother's kid you know i get it like but this is uh concerning you know what happened here what happened here okay so this is not in the best interest of the children and it's a violation of the court order. The father of the minor children, the son of the respondent, has himself posted on Facebook account about his mother withholding the minor children from the petitioner and himself in violation of the law and current orders as outlined. So they outline those orders. Yeah, I mean, but isn't the father supposed to be, well, I, that's what I thought. Like, he's supposed to be in rehab. Is she feeling like, is she kind of like, well, I could do better? Sorry, you guys, I have to turn some light today. Sorry. Is she like, I, you know, I can raise my grandchildren better, therefore I'm going to, you know, I don't know, withhold them? I mean, maybe he's the father has some issues clearly right because he was in rehab or is supposed to be in rehab i mean something so the father of the minor children the son of the respondent which is the grandmother has himself posted on facebook account about his mother withholding the minor children from the petitioner and himself in violation of the law and current order as outlined the respondent, the grandmother, has not to date filed any action for 
grant parental visitation rights, nor has she filed any action to procure guardianship of the minor children. As such, her possession of the children is in violation of the court orders and the laws of the state of Oklahoma. Mm. You, ooh, living with other people, they're very extreme. Wow. You know, that's a great question. Um, why? I guess the question that becomes like, why did mom need supervised visits too? Like what, what was the issue there? Um, that's a great question. I don't know if we're going to get an answer to it. And hold up, hold up. I think that that's the only really updates that we have from this case. We just really don't have a whole lot. Um, it's been over almost a week and a half at this point. But some of this is just not making sense. And I mean, to show you guys how, like, come on now, like, look at this area right here. That is very uh, vast. Just like what Marcy said, like, look at this. Who goes missing here? And like, they found the car and there was a dump there. No, they weren't. I don't think so, Cheeks. I don't think so. I don't believe so. Apparently, your brother was accused of SA, but not sure who made the allegation. Yeah, I think they were unfounded allegations, though, right, Debbie? I could be wrong. But, yo, like, they had a whole drone. They were pulling, dr they were pulling, like, a whole area to figure out, like, wh where did this, where did they go? What happened? Who went missing here? I can show you what I'm talking about. Hold up. Let's go. Very rural area. It's very dark. It's very desolate. And suddenly you found yourself followed. Did I get any of that wrong and take me from there? Oh, man. So we started off our day in Oklahoma City where we went to the OSBI and we've been making our way slowly uh, to the area where the women's SUV was found. And mm. we know that they were supposed to meet up at this abandoned gas station, the Four Corners, uh, which we went to um, and we checked that out. And then we took this right on Highway 95 to see if we could just quickly find the spot where the women's SUV was located, Road L and Highway 95. We turned off. And we looked around and we really, you know, we've been reporting on it and we knew as our team we put a safety plan in, in place together for ourselves saying, let's all watch each other's backs. Let's share our location with other people. We got to this location and I filmed it. You can see it right there. Road L is actually off of 95, a, a bit more than we expected it to be. Now, no. exactly where the car was is between that area and where this cross was found. We found this white cross with yellow ribbon, the women's names are on that cross. Who placed it there? We don't know. Whoa. Who put a cross there? They're missing. This is such a weird case. Hey, B Tim, this is like, like, this is a weird case. Who put a cross there? Did they die? Like, listen, I don't know y'all, but Typically, you put a cross there when somebody dies in a location. You don't put a cross there to just put a cross there. And do we know that this is, I don't think, no, it's not a grave site. Not that we know of. It is creepy, yo. Who puts a cross there? Uh-uh. Uh, but our plan was to show this to you, to film it, and get out of there. And when we went to turn around to go back down this long dirt path road L, this big black truck uh, with tinted windows pulled up and seemingly looked like it was gonna start to block us. And our plan all along was if we see somebody coming down the road, let's all get in the car <gasps> and get out of here, which is exactly what we did, uh, driving back towards the gas station and get- What, did y'all hear, that was the reporter. And people are being told not to speak on this. They're the reporters. Lord have mercy. Hold up. You said that was creepy. Not a good sign. Usually it is where it happens. Well, but who said it was? Here's the thing, Blue Muse. Like, who said anything happened there? Someone did it to be cruel?
it's very specific. It's a white cross with flowers in it and their names is on it. Who did that? That's what I thought. Like, I had a friend many years ago that passed away in a horrible motorcycle accident. We put cross, you know, you put like flowers and, you know, a cross in the site. But that's because they died there. Not be, like, you don't. Who, who did that? And then these reporters are being followed. This is, I'm telling you, ooh, they're not playing. You said trafficking. You think David says the cross is like someone is sending a message. I know, Don. How about, how about the, did they get the plates? You know, in some states, I mean, I don't know, but like some states you have to have like a plate in the front and then a plate in the back. Um, is this one of these states where you have to have like a plate in both sides? You said, look at the handwriting. Maybe it was her children. Ooh, 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 ooh. That is, that, I'm sorry, y'all. That just feels weird. It just, just did. Hold up. Let me, let me go back a little bit. Okay. Hold up. Black truck, uh, with tinted windows pulled up and seemingly looked like it was going to start to block us and our plan all along was if we see somebody coming down the road let's all get in the car and get out of here which is exactly what we did uh driving back towards the gas station and getting back over here uh to a well-lit area so we could report to you tonight but the point was to show you where the suv was found uh what you know there has been no information about what has happened to these women? We have been pressing the OSBI uh, for days now, yeah. for over a week. We don't have any answers. We know that nobody's talking. And Ashley, you and I have been doing these missing person cases for a really long time. And whenever I arrive to a scene like this, I usually see a grid search. I see canine units. We see a command post. We see the types of things that we're used to, but there is nothing. There is no mm. sign of a search going on right now where we are in Oklahoma. This is weird. Okay. And Reba says a yellow ribbon brings means bring them home. Is that what a yellow ribbon means? See, I don't know. Let me know. Is that true? Yellow ribbon. Let me look that up. So yellow ribbon symbolizes, the, wasn't it for the McCanns? That's what I'm pulling up. What does a yellow ribbon mean for a missing person? Bring them home. The phrase, the rallying cry to, the rallying cry to advocate for hostage. Hmm. Was it a yellow ribbon? So maybe that's what they meant to do. We'll look at a little bit further and see. You heard a scanner that a body was found four hours away from the Indian reservation. Wow. I don't know, guys. Uh, and it was a yellow ribbon on that cross, wasn't it? Let me go back a little bit. See, I'd be losing. Yep, 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 right there. So maybe that's what it was. It's just off, though. Like, And we found this white cross with yellow ribbon. The women's names are on that cross. Who placed it there? We don't know. Look at it. It says Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. But why wouldn't they know who placed it there? And why would they put it right there? See, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Why would they put it there? Why would they leave it there? You see the names there? Let me make myself, let me get myself out of the screen. They're sending a message. So they, so Kate says that they put the ribbon there. Shout out to Kate. They're putting the ribbon there because that's where the car was at. See, okay. Do you think that it was the family that put the cross there? I don't know. Let me hit play, y'all. Uh, but our plan was to show this to you, to film it, and get out of there. And when we went to turn around to go back down this long dirt path road L, this big black truck mm -mm. Uh, with tinted windows pulled up 
and seemingly looked like it was going to start to block us. And our plan all along was if we see somebody coming down the road, let's all. Okay. So that is the camera to the truck and there's the plate right there. Yeah. Where's the, where's the license plates? Get in the car and get out of here, which is exactly what we did uh, driving back towards the gas station and getting back over here uh, to a well-lit area so we could report to you tonight. But the point was to show you where the SUV was found, uh, what, you know, there has been no information about hmm. what has happened to these women. We have been pressing the OSBI uh, for days now, for over a week. We don't have any answers. We know that nobody's talking. And Ashley, you and I have been doing these missing person cases for a really long time. And whenever I arrive to a scene like this, I usually see a grid search. I see canine units. We see a command post. We see the types of things that we're used to, but there is nothing. There is no mm. sign of a search going on right now where we are in Oklahoma. Mm. So this know. is why I was distressed. Can I just ask our control room to roll that video that they were just showing as Laura was showing us that location that Hold now up. all of a sudden that the cross has shown up in that spot where the women uh, disappeared. Laura, there was a truck uh, on the left-hand side of the screen um, is that the black truck that you were referring to, or was it an, another black truck? No. Oh, okay. It was another black truck. What you see... Okay, so this is a different black truck. There on the screen is uh, we have vehicles that belong to us, and okay. it was uh, further down the road. So it was right where the highway and the road met, and this truck kind of pulled in. Now, were we near somebody's private property? We might have been. Uh, you know, I've been, I'm from California, and so a lot of these roads lead to, you know, vineyards. But we have described, and we took some drone video today as well. Uh, but yeah, you can see that cross. It has their names on it. Who placed it there? It looks mm. like this is the spot where the SUV was found. Uh, the drone footage that we took earlier, uh, we specifically did to show everybody just how rural this area is. You've been hearing us talk about it. You've been hearing Brooke Schaefer mm. uh, mention it as well. But we wanted to get up and out and show you that it's... Ooh, let me stop right here. Hold up. I see you, Brett, says Dylan Brown's body's been found. East Idaho News. Whoa, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Yeah. Um. Wow. He's been, like, missing for two years, you guys. His body's been found. Sorry, you guys. Breaking news. Um, presumed to be Dylan Brown's uh, remains found in remote Utah desert. Yo. That's crazy. Really? I thought it was it. I, I, it's all over. It's all over. Wow. Thank you. I see you, Brett. Um, Yeah, it sounds like East Idaho News broke the story. Let me go back over here, you guys. Sorry, I got distracted because that's... Uh, Brendan made a plea deal. Mm. Wow. Okay. Let me uh, head over here and then... Um, yeah, sorry, you guys. I got distracted. That as far as the eye can see... Um, you know, there's a lot of terrain to get to. It's a lot of farmland. Uh, there are some pig farms that are nearby, which are easy to spot and smell as you're driving down the road. Um, but as far as the location, uh, the gas station that's right behind me uh, does have a flyer from the OSBI with the women's faces on it, uh, Veronica and Jillian. We walked mm -hmm. in and we talked to the gas station attendant, uh, a young lady, and we asked her how she, I mean, she was working there alone. We said, how are you feeling? What are you doing? And she said, well, oh. I'm nervous. We just don't know what's going on. I, I'm checking in with my family and they're calling to ask me if I'm okay. Just to let you guys know if you could see the drone footage there. I mean, look at that. This is, where do these people, where do these women go? Where are they? Hey, because I'm sitting here at this cast register alone and you can't blame her. There was a picture that um, your drone video caught just a, a bit ago, and it, it looked like maybe that was one of the industrial pig farms that you were talking about. Is mm -hmm. that one of those 
facilities, because I have to be mm -hmm. honest with you, in the absence of any information from authorities, there's all sorts of crazy rumors about pig farms and how they might be involved in all of this. I mean, the, the, the rumor mill is on overdrive. It is. Uh, and that is, that is right down the road. In fact, that uh, industrial pig farm is between the location where the SUV was found and the gas station where the women were supposed to have that supervised meetup wow. uh, to have Veronica's children handed off. And I also want to mention something that's really important here. Ten days before Veronica Butler and her friend went missing, there was a court filing. I, I printed it out. I read it on the plane right here. It is filed on March 20th, 10 days before. This was a bitter custody battle. Was it involved in this? We don't know. And I also want to mention that I've been talking to a private investigator not involved in this case, but knows the area well. And she said that there's a lot of human trafficking that goes on here. There, there's a lot of, because it is so that rural, said there yesterday. are other things that happen. So while people are focusing on family matters and the bitter custody battle that was going on. There are other items to con consider. Uh, of course, the trucking industry that we've got truckers up and down. You know, we just don't know. The OSBI is not telling us what's going on. We thought we might get an update from them today. They told me over the weekend, if there's not an update over the weekend, we'll talk to you on Monday. Well, here it is. And we don't have an update from them, not an official one. Other they would need a warrant to search a pig farm, right? Because it sounds like there's Big farms around that area. I mean, they're just, I'm just saying. Than them telling us that they're really busy. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. Go to newsnationnow.com to find wow. News Nation on your. Okay, hold up. Let me see what you guys are saying. Yeah, it's a horrible thought. I don't even want to think about that, but please. Uh, my email was up there. Hey, too persuasive. Uh, the fact that they are highly sus. I'm concerned for these women. Thank you, B. Tim. I did see that. Let me go ahead. And, all right. So before I end, I kind of switch a little bit. I want to go over to the Dylan Brown stuff. For those that don't know this case, thank you so much for this clip, this video. Um, we love how his parents represent him. We will find you, Dylan. Uh, hold on to hope. And then there's these wonderful photos that his mother has. Hold up, y'all. I need to go back a little bit. So this is Idaho News. Eaton with East Idaho News com. We have some breaking news to bring you right now. The body of Dylan Rounds has been found. Wow. Dylan Rounds, his remains have been found in the remote area of Lucen, Utah. Wow. Dylan is the young 19-year-old who vanished over Memorial Day weekend back in 2022. He was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucen, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border when he vanished and his family tells me that this morning his remains were found near or in Lucin in a remote area that's all the information that we have at the moment from his family wow of course rounds had been missing since may of 2022 the 19 year old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers his mother, Candace Cooley, tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today, in, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in um, or, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how remote this area is. Oh my gosh. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. Um, he again, must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point, uh, but they they do have the remains because of, uh, of where James Brenner led them. This is a spot where James Brenner had his camper. He lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate campers. And when, his, when Dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late May of 2022, they found his boots right there behind that mound of dirt which was some distance off. 
And there was also a shed right by James Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing, James Brenner cleaned that shed to the, to the point of how it looks now. You know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed wow. to Dylan's family. And he did take those to a, uh, an undisclosed location. And so all of this would, would likely have come into play if, if there was a trial, it still could as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned, according to Dylan's family, as part of some sort of plea deal, Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was, and they were able to find it. I spoke with Dylan's family. They, of course, are a lot of emotions tonight. This has been a, um, such a mystery since for two years now. But Yeah, definitely. I'm going to stop right here, guys, because um, I got to go tend to baby bunny. But wow, I mean, yeah, rest easy prayers for Dylan Round's family, um, his mother, everyone um, in that family. I just, that's, wow. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments as we've reviewed both cases. Remember, you know, also keep that other family. Let's keep on trying to bring some more awareness to Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly because that in itself, that whole case, I, it's a mystery. We need to figure out like what happened here. And also keep Dylan Round's family in your prayers. I'm going to let you guys go. I will see you guys in the next one. You guys have a great night. Rabbits out. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, B-Tim, for sharing. Thank you, thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.